Hey, what is going on everyone? Mr. Light here coming back with another video. I wanted to talk about something you could already see in the pro in the video description, the thumbnail. It's actually not clickbait here. A lot of people are doing this clickbait stuff, but before we actually get into the topic today, do me a favor, go ahead and click that subscription button, click the notification bell, wax the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much guys and enjoy the content. So today I wanted to talk about something that is very, very important to me. I've noticed this having been been in the, you know, the detailing space for what now 12 years, 11, about 11 years now, uh, the automotive reconditioning space, the detailing space, 11 years and working in dealerships and then on my own and working, selling products for various companies. Um, I've seen a lot of common uh, mindsets going into each area that I worked in as far as in the detailing space. And in the, the, the title of the video, you notice I'm talking about why to not start a business in 2023 or why to not start a detailing business in general. And here is the deal. A lot of us, what happens is we work for a company and and sometimes we get fed up with our boss. We hate the way things are going. We hate the way this person's doing this. I don't like this person talking to me this way. I don't, I don't appreciate this right here. And what happens is we get this mentality of the grass is greener on the other side. Now, here's the deal. That can be the case. The grass can be greener on the other side. But most of the time... What's happening is it's not that the grass is actually greener on the other side. It's that you as an individual need to grow up. Uh, you as an individual need to change. And that's kind of what I want to talk about a little bit today. So we go and we want to start this company. I hate the way this person's talking to me or I see this person's doing this and I should be doing that. And I don't like someone telling me what to do. I got to do my own thing. And, and there's all these things and I got to be honest. 10% of the time I've seen people start a business with that mindset, 10% of the time I've seen them succeed. And that's talking about even at this standpoint, um, you know, that is, you know, two, three, four years removed from seeing that individual uh, leave doing whatever they are doing. And they say, I can do this on my own. I can do that. I can do that. And what happens is instead of going and into the detailing industry, becoming an entrepreneur, starting a business, instead of having the mindset of I am going to serve my clients and I'm going to provide a service to the world, instead it's I'm going to make my own income. They're doing, they're making this much money and I'm going to go ahead and do that on my own. It's very selfish motivated and not selfless motivated. Now, here's the thing. My time in church and my time in ministry, I've learned something that the objective of someone who is in ministry or whatever, it's to serve people. It's to serve the needs of people. It's not about me. It's about the people. And that's the same thing of becoming an entrepreneur. Uh, the same thing of starting a business. You find a need in the market and you serve people who have that need. That means there's going to be times where your clients are talking down to you. But why would you leave your work when your boss is talking down to you to go now to service clients who are also going to talk down to you? You weren't, le you weren't escaping being talked down to. You just switched who it was coming from. Uh, you, you're we're, you're now going into this space to serve a need, to fill a void, and your objective should be to service the needs of the client. But when you have a selfish mentality, when you do not have a selfless motive, what happens is you get quickly frustrated, you quickly become burnout, and your selfish motivation begins to speak. It begins to bleed out in your speech. It begins to bleed out in your words. Have you ever met someone who owned a business, probably a car wash, right? And you looked at them and they look so beat down. They look like they did not enjoy life. Why would they not enjoy life? They have a business. They're working by themselves. They're working for themselves. Why are they still 
miserable. They could be washing 15 cars a day at $30 a car. That's $450 a day. That is more money than most people make on the average income. You're talking about right there, that's close to, I don't know, math, you know, I'm, I'm horrible at math, but if $200 a day would equal 50 grand a year, you're talking about they make, they make just over six figures a year. They're making over a hundred grand a year and they are still miserable. They are still beaten down by life. They are still upset. Why is that? It's because their selfish motivations are leading them and not the willingness to be selfless and to serve people. They forgot what it's like to have balance in their life. They forgot what it's like to uh, provide a service and to find gratification in serving people. There's a reason why restaurants, these high-scale restaurants, their servers, their waiters, their waitresses, their hostesses, uh, there's a reason why some of them are so wealthy. Butlers, that's a good example. You think back on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, right? Jeffrey the butler. I mean, you're t he was a very, very wealthy butler. And in the show, they made him seem kind of jaded and all that stuff because he didn't necessarily appreciate the way he was talked down to. But you can tell he was bred to serve people. You can tell that it was it was imparted into him that, and it was a part of him to serve the needs of people, of other people. Let's not even just say the needs of the people who hire him. It's just the needs of people. And we as individuals who want to start businesses need to realize if we are going to do this, it's because there is a desire to serve people. That means you're going to be talked down to. That means you're going to be stepped on. That means you will be undervalued. That means people will not appreciate you. And yes, you should stand up for yourself and establish appropriate boundaries in your business so people do not talk down to you, do not walk all over you. And if they do, you can easily and comfortably and eloquently say, you know what, this is just not the fit for us. We're not the right fit for each other. Maybe you need to find someone else, okay? Uh, you have to be able to do those things. But the only reason why someone can do that with comfort and stability is because they know their objective. They know their passion. They know what they're supposed to be doing. If you go and clean a car and you enjoy the process and all of a sudden you say, oh, I could start a business doing this. No, that's a selfish motive. You are doing it for yourself not to serve the needs of the client, not to serve the needs of the greater South Florida area, not to serve the needs of the people that are around you. You're doing it to serve your own needs and it becomes very selfish and not selfless. If you're the kind of person who gets really caught up in the, in, in, in the, in the fads and I gotta have this, I gotta have that, I gotta have this new thing, I gotta have that new thing, you're gonna find yourself getting very, very frustrated very quickly because what's gonna happen is you're gonna be spinning your wheels because when you're building a business, it's exactly what it is, it's building. I've been taking care of a client who's down on the intercoastal by the beach. Wealthy people, you know, I go to their, it's a, I'm going to 130 foot mega yacht every single week to clean one of the crew cars and the land that's right in front of the dock where this yacht is parked, for the past two years, they have just been paving away at land. Not even, not, not even building a house, but they've been establishing the foundation so this probably $20 million home can be built. Uh, for two years, I've been going there and watching this happen. It's just been a dirt plot. And finally, in the past three months, maybe I could say, in the past three months, now we're starting to see the actual walls of the home being built. You're talking about two years later after they had started building and no, there's really no, you can't say, oh, because of COVID, this and that. Here's the deal. People who are building $25 million homes, they don't care if they're going to spend an extra 500 grand on materials or on lumber or on this or that. They don't care about that. This home is not a, a source of... This is not a forever home for the person. As a matter of fact, at this area, the person who owns Hampton Bay fans, the fans that we all that we all know about, those uh, those those rotating fans that stand up that say Hampton Bay, the owner of that company is the person who is building this home. He don't care about an extra five hundred grand, an extra million dollars on steel and lumber. He just wants the home to get built. 
For him, this is just a way of securing net worth for him. For him, this is just a way of keeping his, his, his finances safe. And so he don't care about spending an extra whatever on building the home, but he wanted to make sure it was right. And so for a year and a half, two years, they're just establishing a foundation here where if we don't have a good foundation to this home, this home is going to, yeah, it might look gorgeous, a nice three-story, whatever, mega mansion, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it looks gorgeous until a hurricane comes by South Florida again and destroys it. See, these homes have to be able to withstand the storm. These homes have to be able to withstand what's happening and all these crazy things that are going on. We've seen so many times, time and time and time again, where these older buildings, we just saw the earthquake that just happened in Turkey a couple months back. The reason why there is so much damage and devastation is because those buildings were not up to code. They were not done the right way. They just wanted to put up buildings so people can live places and have businesses. They were trying to solve a symptom or address a symptom, not address the overall issue. And so when you're building a business, you have to remember, one, this is going to be a slow grind. And two, I got to make sure that if I am doing this, I am doing this to establish a good foundation. I'm in this for the long haul. I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to take care of my health. Over here in the video, I am struggling getting around this vehicle because with all the traveling I've been doing, I have an extremely herniated disc. And now I've been talking to spine specialists. And now we're talking about doing surgery or microdiscectomy or whatever it is. You know, we're talking about those things. But that's because I haven't taken the best care of myself. I'm a little bit overweight. Yeah, I see a chiropractor, but I get so bogged down by work where I haven't been able to go to the gym or, excuse me, I've decided not to go to the gym. I could have gone, but I decided not to go. Um, and so those are things to think about. I'm 32 years old and I'm realizing, holy smokes, this this, this hurts, you know? This is painful, this hurts. I, I, I tried to skip a part of the foundation process and now I'm paying for it. Uh, thank God I have insurance. Uh, but you know what, a lot of detailers what happens, and I get so many people calling me, they make $1,200 on a ceramic coating. And what's the first thing they do? No, it's not go ahead and put money in the bank. No, the first thing they do, it's not make sure I have insurance. It's not making sure I have this taken care of or that taken care of. You know what's the first thing they do? I had a guy call me and he told me, okay, I got a ceramic coating coming up. It's going to be $1,100, but I just dropped $1,500 on polishers. Like, no, <laughs> you're missing the point. You're missing the point. Build a business. Build a business. Don't think about, I got to have the flashiest stuff. I got to have the nicest this, the nicest that. Don't, don't even worry about those things. If all you got is a porter cable, go get it with your porter cable. You can get good results with that. Will it be as fast? No, but you don't know any better anyway. I can't say that for this guy. He's used great machines and he knows the difference between the two. But financially, he was not in, this, in the position to where he could afford these polishers. Uh, not only that, though, I know of another guy. Um, you know what? I won't talk about that. But I will mention this. Um, when it comes to tools, when it comes to these different things that you can get, don't get caught up in having the flashiest polishers. Uh, the flashiest pressure washers and the flashiest chemicals and, and this and that. Make sure the bones of the business are taken care of. One, do you have a vehicle? I have a vehicle. I got a Scion XB, a 2010. I get people commenting in my videos all the time that my car is a beater. You know what? You're right. It is a beater. But you know something? It has 180,000 miles. It works. There's, the check engine light is not on. There is not a single issue with the vehicle. And you want to know what else? It's paid off. And you want to go out there and get you a brand new truck for your business and spend close to $1,000 a month with insurances and fees and, and interest rates and all that. And you know something? I don't care about those things. The client that I'm working on this video, he don't care about that stuff. He's an extremely wealthy man. He don't care. His, his family, who I take care of his family, they don't care. They're very wealthy people. They don't care. I take care of extremely high dollar, extremely wealthy people here. You know what's the last thing they talk to me about? is my vehicle. And when they do talk to me about it, you know what they say? It's paid off. 
It's a tool. I had one guy who's worth multi, multi, multi-million dollars tell me if a tool doesn't look dirty, then it was never used. Let that sink in. This is a guy who works in the insurance industry, selling life insurance, has four cars. All of his vehicles are worth over $100,000 and he's about ready to drop over 500 grand on a Ferrari. <laughs> he don't care about how a tool looks. He just wants to make sure that it works. And the only way to know if a tool works is to see that it's actually been used. And so, yes, I could paint my vehicle. Yes, I could do this. Yes, I could do that. I could do all these different things. But when it is all said and done, when you go to your client, do you smell good? Do you look good? Do you care? Do you have people skills? Are you able to speak to someone clearly and articulately? Don't, you don't have to be perfect. But don't get so caught. If you're the kind of person that gets caught up in having to keep up with the Joneses, I have to have the flashiest this, the flashiest that. I've got to have the brand new $2,000 pressure washer. i got to have the $2,000 generator. i got to have a $60,000 Mercedes Sprinter van. Get out of it. Don't, don't even think of If that's what you need to have to start business, you don't need to be getting in business. You know what you need to start business? Work ethic. You need to have that determination and that bulldog tenacity to say, I don't care if all I have is a bucket and some Dawn dish soap and an old shirt. I'm going there and starting a business. When I used to sell products, there was a man who walked in the store. I'll never forget. He was a man. He, he looked like he was just below middle age, probably his early to mid 40s. And he was tell, I, I was talking to him and, we were, and he was explaining to me the process of how he started his, his business. And he told me this. He said, man, I was in a halfway house. I was addicted to drugs. I came out of prison. I was homeless and I had nothing but my pit bull. It was just him and his dog that lived under a bridge. And so what he did, he started cleaning windows in the middle of intersections and he found enough money to save up for a tricycle with a basket in the front. And this guy went and got a little bucket, some Don just soap, some shirts and a sponge. And he started washing cars for $5. Three, four, five years later, he had a brand new van, an Optima steamer. He had a full-blown company with people working under him. And he was talking about how he was just about to drop over $1,000 on a wedding ring for his fiance. He just bought himself a PS4. This was some years ago. Obviously, PS4s are more newer at that time. But he was telling me about these things. And you know what he told me that was even more impressive? He did it with no debt. He had no debt, but he had determination. He didn't need an investment from a company. He just needed to get out there and pound the pavement. And so if you're the kind of person that finds excuses not to get started, you don't need to be in the detailing business. If you're the kind of person that finds every reason to not go ahead and get started, I don't have this, I don't have that, I'm afraid of this, I'm afraid of that, don't start detailing. Don't go back to where you're working before, be comfortable, make whatever money you're making before, and be comfortable and be secure. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with security. I wish I had security in my life, to be honest. There's times where detailing can be stressful, but I've learned to endure the hard times. And until God opens up the right door, I'm here. I'm standing here. My business is going. We're marching forward. We're going to take care of South Florida and we're going to serve the needs of the clients out there because there is a need for a service like this, but not just a need for a service like this because there's a million car washes out there. There's a need for someone who has integrity. There's a need for someone who says, I care about your vehicle. And if you have this in your car, I'm not gonna be stealing. I'm, you don't have to worry about me. I'm taking care of you and I'm giving you a better quality of life. And in return, yes, you're gonna pay my prices, but I'm going to provide you a better quality of life. So you don't have to go out of your way to clean your car yourself. You can make your millions of dollars all by yourself. You don't have to worry about going over to the car wash or whatever. I'm here to serve your needs. And so point blank, if you're not willing to serve the needs of people, you do not need to be a detailer. If you're going to get caught up in the flashiness of having to have this and that, you don't need to be a detailer. If you are going to hold yourself back, hold yourself back from pressing forward and moving forward, 
and being everything you've been designed to be. If you're going to put limitations on yourself and you're going to be apprehensive to stepping out of the box, you don't need to be a detailer. You need a job. And so that's what I wanted to talk about today. There might be another minute left of this video, but I hope that all made sense. I don't want to make it sound like I'm preaching, but more so I want to convey the fact that not everyone needs to be a detailer. Not everyone needs to start a business. You can detail your cars and be able to uh, be able to help your OCD. If that help, if that if that brings a better quality of life to you, you can do that on your own without starting a business. But if you want to start a business, you need to make sure that you're here to serve people. You're going to provide top quality service, and you're going to make sure that you take care of the bottom line of your business. Because if you can't afford to stay in business, you can't serve the needs of people. And so, guys, Mr. Ladd here signing out. Thank you so much for tuning into this channel. I'm going to go ahead and let the video play out until the end. But if you have not already done so, click that subscription button. Click the notification bell. Wax the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for tuning into this video, and have a wonderful day.